Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about furniture. What came about this furniture idea or even why I'm curating so much furniture is because I intend to move out of my parents' house in a year's time. So I've spent this past couple months and the ongoing year doing this very careful curation of furniture pieces. I find that the industry surrounding furniture is just like, it's ironic because everyone needs furniture and you know, Ikea's are out of stock of all of their most popular items, but yet you see so much furniture on the streets, near the dumpsters, people are giving it away. And granted, I understand that people are constantly in different life stages, so they're constantly moving out, maybe they're moving out of an apartment, seeing just how much goes to waste and yet we're in a shortage and supply chain is down. You would think that people do not want to give away their furniture, but yet I'm finding so many people just disposing, discarding a perfectly good furniture pieces. So that got me thinking, how can I, one, curate a, a home of my dreams and not be basic? But of course, furniture is a very subjective thing. But secondly, how do I furnish a whole place sustainably? So this is a lofty goal, maybe to some, but to me, I think it's very attainable. And this year long journey of curating pieces for my future home is going to be based off of buying secondhand, buying vintage, buying thrifted, or getting pieces for free, or finding pieces off the side of the road, or going on Facebook Marketplace. Call it a lofty ambition. Come back in a year's time to see if I actually successfully did it. The first set, I guess you would call it, is this patio set that I just, oh, I just fell in love with. It's this beautiful like sage or almost like muted turquoise patio set and in the initial picture when, where I saw it at the thrift store it looked more almost leaning towards gray than it did turquoise but I saw the vision I had that design eye so I immediately snatched it so I spent $25 on the three-piece patio set and then another 20-ish dollars on spray paint and with a little bit of buffing off of all of that rust with steel wool a little coat of spray paint it's looking brand freaking new. The next thing I purchased was a pleated lamp shade. And the reason why I'm saying it's just the shade is because I pretty much deconstructed everything else and just kept the shade part. You can actually see it right over here. When I first bought this pleated lampshade, to me it just looked super mid-century. It looked like it belonged in somebody's Parisian house or something like that. And the shade, although I have it downwards, it was actually facing upwards in a V. So the original condition of the lamp, at least the pole supporting it was just beyond fixing. The condition of the brass was just pretty bad. So I did try using materials like rub and buff, which is supposedly supposed to make brass look that shiny finish as it's supposed to but it, it made actually the item look even worse than it originated at so with that said I was like scrap that idea and instead I'm going to upcycle it to something that fits my look through a little bit of Etsy inspiration I found a lot of these lamps made with these wooden dowels I basically used a six foot long wooden dowel and then like a two foot long cross dowel to me this looks very Scandinavian I don't know you guys tell me do you guys think this just looks discombobulated but i really like how this looks like the perfect reading nook lamp for the cost of the full project to upcycle this lamp the original lamp was around five dollars the dowels was around ten dollars rounds out fifteen dollars to do this upcycle diy project the next thing i'm going to talk about are these ceramic i like to say that they're japanese teacups when i visited japan years ago this is a lot of the teacups that they used very petite it's like five inches tall and I want to say that it was handmade because there's the variances on all three cups. All of them don't look like carbon copies of each other. And it just has this super beautiful glaze. I hope in the future to use these as little teacups. And it has even a place for your thumb and fingers to hold a little divot, which I thought was a very cool detail. But I got all three of these cups for $6. And moving on to more kitchen related stuff. I air quote kitchen because when I first saw these bowls, I was like, wow, these are so beautiful. They look like clamshell bowls. They look like a catch-all bowl. Maybe I can put my keys in. My jewelry in that it was from Pampered Chef and as we know or you may not know Pampered Chef is a old kitchenware line so it's very vintage it's considered very vintage now but I was like oh Pampered Chef why would Pampered Chef be making jewelry holders I should have connected the two so I looked into this a little bit more and they're actually tostado molds so like you know those tostado bowls with the shell 
yeah, so that's what that is, but I'm not using it as that. I'm using it as a catch-all tray. Two Tostada bowls, they're exactly the same. I got them for $6. This next thing I got was this smoked glass cup, and might I say, when I saw this in the distance, on the racks of all the glassware, I knew I had to have it. Is this common? Do people just like fawn over cups? It has such a good weight to it. It has such a good height to it. And it just looks so beautiful. Like something about having a nice looking cup with a beverage of your choice while working just, I don't know, motivates you. Like some people say having plants near you motivates you. I say looking at a beautiful cup motivates me to work. I was so happy with this smoked glass cup. I got it for $3 and I honestly don't know where it originally came from, but by the weight of it, I feel like it's very, very, very high quality. So the next thing I got that's kitchen related are these wicker coasters. And this is honestly just for a function. I know a lot of people like boho designers put these wicker coasters on like the wall in a cluster. That's not my vibe. I bought these to actually use on the kitchen table. Crazy, I know. But yeah, I like how these are not just your typical like cork coasters. They're wicker, they look really contemporary, they look cool. Glad to use these and I got two of these for $3. Now the next thing I got is kind of funny. I guess it should have been classified under my kitchen stuff. Uh, my boyfriend and I were making this cutting board. Pro tip, do not leave your hardwood goods after you've glued it and all that. Do not leave it in the sun, uh, specifically the Southern California sun because that sun is brutal. So we had, this is like the fourth cutting board that we had made. We thought we got it down lock and there's nothing that could go wrong. Huh, funny, things went wrong. So we glued it together, left it out in the sun uh, to dry, you know, two to three hours while we were doing other wood wicking projects. And then when we came back, it had totally bowed completely warped and we're like, well, this is at the point of no return because, you know, a cutting board is supposed to stay flat. Um, I don't know if your guys' cutting board rocks. Um, I don't think one should, but if yours does, let me know. How is that working for you? So we kind of put this project on pause to finish this cutting board for a while, but then my boyfriend had the bright idea to make this, this cutting board into like a side table of sorts. And so I've always wanted to do a project with hairpin leg. What we ended up doing was taking the cutting, what would have been the cutting board as the side table base and then adding four hairpin legs. I got these hairpin legs from from Amazon for $22. They're about 18 inches tall. So it not only works as a nightstand or side table, but it also can work as a stool if you wanted to sit on it. So I like the idea of having something be multifunctional in my house. These next items I got from Facebook Marketplace and a lot of them, if not all of them, I got for free. I kid you not, y'all, if you are not checking Facebook Marketplace religiously as like you check the weather, get on that because you can find gems of pieces on Facebook Marketplace because oftentimes when people are resorting to Facebook Marketplace, they might be like in a rush to move out of their place. So the faster it can get out, the better. I just want to take a moment of silence for this Bentwood cane rocking chair that I found. Ah. Some sweet lady was trying to move her mom out of her house. So she was just trying to shuffle things out of the house as quickly as possible. It came really rocky because all the screws had loosened and there was just a, probably like 10 years of grime on it. I know that sounds disgusting, but just like it had probably just been stored in their garage. So all it really needed was just me to wipe it down with like a microfiber cloth. I just wiped it down with water and tightened all the screws and it was it, it was essentially good as new. The only flaw it had was just a tiny, tiny chip near the left armrest, but Everything other than that was actually perfect. I was thinking about restoring it, but then I thought it really doesn't need it. And kind of like, I like the character that you knew that the original owner probably used it and loved it. So I kept the character. I don't know, is that an excuse to just not fix something? <laughs> Following that is this Ikea, I think it's called the Bestia, originally called the Bestia like entertainment set, but it's the smoked glass entertainment set. Similarly, this woman was moving out of her apartment into a smaller apartment and so she was not able to house this entertainment center because it's like six feet long. So she was trying to get it out fast. And I said, I can come to you immediately. <laughs> it probably has not even been used for more than a year. When I saw it and took a careful inspection of it, there's absolutely no scratches, looks brand new. And I think it was brand new because she said she hadn't been living in the apartment long and she got that piece when she moved into the new apartment. So I was just over the moon. 
I definitely think this is going to be a focal point of my living room when I move in. So, so pleased with that. The next things I got were these glassware pieces. Nothing really that interesting aside from the fact that I feel like they're the perfect espresso cup. So I like to host brunch a lot and I recently got an espresso machine. So I will definitely be using these little espresso cups to serve coffee. I think it's just so darling. And the woman was giving away like so many of them. I think there's total of like something like 15 to 20 of them. So do I have 15 to 20 friends? Mm. Yeah, so uh, these next two things that I got are the same lamp. So this is a like 1980s vintage art deco lamp and it didn't come with a lampshade, but that's actually perfectly fine with me because that gives me the liberty to choose something that I like to accompany this lamp. It looked even more beautiful in person. I found this like mid-century modern cantilever leather chair and I honestly like to some people it might look like a chair you find in the waiting room of a dentist's office, but hey, I like that. Similarly, so pleased to find it at such a good deal. This Goodwill had it priced only at $7.99, which I thought was very reasonable, but it's because it had a lot of wear to it. So there was some staining on the leather, the metal or aluminum pieces were all rusted. But you know, just with the little elbow grease, that takes you a long way. So I took this chair home, buffed up the leather and took off the rust with a metal bristle brush as well as steel wool and vinegar and before you know it, it looks like a brand new piece. And I still can't believe I got it for $7.99. I'm wearing it right now. I'm not wearing it, I'm wearing it. I'm using it right now and it's actually going to be my future office chair. I really like the bounce that it has. And then the last and final thing that I got is this beautiful, beautiful cake stand. And I looked up just comparable listings on Etsy, on eBay, and people are easily selling this thing for over $80, and I completely understand why. I knew without even looking at comparable listings that this was a really good quality cake stand because of just the construction of it. So I think a lot of times modern cake stands, like the ones you find at Target, the, the bottom base to the plate is usually just glued. So with enough washes, just pop right off and that would just be a disaster. Actual like cake stand in t it, both pieces, the two piece set probably weighs something around like 40 pounds, which shows that this is the actual like real glass. It's not like plexiglass or like that fake glass material. It's the real deal. It's the real thing. So honestly, if it was just out on the counter table, looks like an art piece itself. I was super happy to get this piece for $11.99. Can't wait to make a cake so I can just put it in my cake stand. <laughs> Those are all the things that I've curated in the last like four, three months or so for the new place that I'm moving into next year. I hope you guys are inspired to go look at your local thrift store, go on the secondhand marketplace, and you would be surprised at what you can find. I'll do another video later down the road showing more pieces that I accumulated and curated. And just like, let me know if you guys are interested. Join me in this journey of moving to my own place. So I thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye.